Good morning, welcome back to the vlog. Welcome to the first day of every day gets longer from here until summer. Basically, yesterday was the shortest day of the year. We had about 40 minutes of sunlight or something. But now from, from here on in, we've got uh, every every single day gets progressively lighter and lighter and, and better. Supposedly, it gets better. But it's like Friday today. It's three days until Christmas. Christmas is on Monday. It's a rest day for me. I'm going to clean the car this afternoon because if you just take a look at it right here, this, yeah, I literally have no words. If you think how dirty the bike gets after one ride with, with like the grit and all the salt on the road, Combine that by two weeks of driving a car around. It's not pretty, so I'm gonna give it a full-on wash, wax it and polish it. But anyway, this morning, today's a rest day. I think I just mentioned that, but this morning I'm heading over to Steve's house. He's actually moving house over the weekend, so I'm gonna go and help him, give him a hand. Here's my thinking, right? If I go and help him move house, I'm gonna be in his good books. Like Steve's the rider that, that chooses the teams to put into the races. So if I'm in his good books, he might put me in the better races, you know? Maybe not, but it's worth a try. That is where I'm going this morning. The other day I didn't show you the new team car with like the bike rack on the roof and all that good stuff. So I think today, so I think today we're gonna reveal the 2018 St. Piran team car. Sick. This may be the first time I've been in Barn Oldswick and it's not been raining. The first time. Always, always rains here. Spent an hour, maybe an hour and a half at Steve's house uh, packing up the van. We've got this van for the day. I'm uh, I'm driving it because I'm the responsible one. Oh yeah, I can see today's video just being a whole f car vlog. Welcome back to another episode of Driving with Cam. Uh, we're taking it all to like a storage unit. <laughs> There's sheep there making, making more sheep. come up you come inside and right now that is uh, that's all you're gonna get at the team car I'm not really supposed to like show you just yet but I, I just kind of filmed what I was able to film like a lot of the team stuff you know the riders the sponsors is, is kind of it's not public knowledge yet even though like we, we all know about it so I have to be careful what I say and what I show and put in these videos like you're gonna know absolutely everything in I'd like to say the next week. Anyway, I spent the morning with Steve, helping him move out of his house, put all of his stuff into storage. Now, whilst we're back home, we've got some light. I'm gonna go to my grandma's. I've got my cleaning stuff here. And you know what? It's time to give the car, it's time to give the car a proper clean. The reason that I came to my grandma's house to clean the car is because she has got a power washer with uh, with foam in. Which one's Lexi? Lexi. Nope, yeah, that's that's Lexi. And because the car's got that much grit and dirt on it, I don't just want to uh, just, just like rub it off with with soap initially because that's just going to scratch and ruin the paintwork. So first off, before I clean it properly, I'm going to do a few touchless washes with uh, with the foam in the jet washer. That way we're going to get the bulk of uh, all, all the main dirt off and then we will uh, we'll go from there. <laughs> I've literally spent so long on this just washing it. I've let the car dry now. It's looking it's looking fairly clean. However, to finish it off and look get it looking real spotless, I'm gonna I'm gonna cover the whole of the car in a coat of wax. And once that's done, the car should be looking as good as new. So it's about two hours later now, start to finish. We're just losing the light, but uh, the car's nice and clean now. And before it goes completely dark, I'm gonna try and get some sick little cinematic shots. Shawty tell me she a dancer, dancer. That bitch stuck me in a chancer, a chancer. Count my harness to the dasher, the dasher. Whip it for a jet like NASA, like NASA. Okay. Come on, let's go. 
So before I head home in a minute, I'm just going to go down to uh, the pond at my grandma's house. She's got the same dog that Lexi is, which is a lab border collie cross. They are exactly the same age. They're not from the same litter. We just got the dogs at the same time as my grandma did. But uh, there's a jetty here in the lake and what are you doing? And Millie, which is my grandma's dog, has this party trick where she just runs off the jetty and jumps in the water. And I'm going to try and make her do it right now in front of the camera. She's crazy. I told you she's crazy. <laughs> I mean, commitment and effort, that is a straight 10 out of 10. Millie, you're a crazy dog. You are absolutely crazy. However, sometimes when they are together, it's hard to distinguish which is Lexi and which is, uh, which is Millie. Crazy, crazy dog. She is just, she's not tapped right in the head. Guys, I'm currently driving home from my grandma's house, but look how bad this fog is this afternoon. Visibility is so bad. I literally can't even see a thing. So I made it home and I'm going to do some work on my uh, on my winter bike very, very quickly. I need to do a bit of a custom job. So obviously on my winter bike, I've got a full mud guard on the back. However, for some reason, water still flicks up from the bottom and kind of gets me wet a little bit, but more so if there's anyone riding behind me. Granted, I ride on my own for the majority of the time, but over the next few days, I'm going to be riding with people. It gives a wet forecast and um, these mud guards don't really keep the riders behind me dry. I also encountered this problem last year. As you can see, there's already a hole in the back of the mud guard. So essentially, what I need to do is I need to create or I need to make a small addition to the bottom of the mud guard, like a little flap at the bottom. I think the best way to do this, and this is how I did it last year, is by using a water bottle. Shout out to Zwift for supplying this bottle. I'm just going to cut it in half this will make it easier to cut it to the right size once we measure it all up it doesn't have to be very precise or anything it's more just the fact that there's a piece of there's a piece of plastic there stopping all the water from flying up and it should keep my training partners a little bit happier when they are riding behind me perfect This is a little bit of a bodge job, but that's the idea. It's just a temporary thing. I'm only in this country on this bike for another two weeks. And then I fly off to the sun, hopefully off to the sun. Look at that. Now, even when I'm riding outdoors, I've got a little bit of Zwift with me at all times. But whilst I'm outside right now, I thought this would be a good opportunity to talk very quickly. Like obviously today I was helping Steve move out of his house and that's because basically he, you know, he's moving back down to Cornwall, which for you foreign viewers, uh, it's, like, it's about six hours drive from where like we currently live right now. And one of the reasons he's moving back down there is because that, like Cornwall is where my team, St. Perrin, that's where it's based. Now, even though the team is based in Cornwall, a number of the riders, including me, uh, aren't actually from Cornwall. I can't talk about the riders because a lot of them haven't been announced yet. But basically to clear up a little bit of confusion, it's not a Cornish, like co completely Cornish based team. It's a Cornish back team with Cornish heritage, but that doesn't necessarily mean all the riders are from Cornwall. And another question to clear up, that also doesn't mean I'm gonna have to relocate and move down to Cornwall. I'm gonna stay right here in Preston where I currently live. I mean, there's no reason for me to go and live in Cornwall at this at this moment in time. Moreover, a lot of the a lot of the national elite series race are up north anyway. So I'm better off being located currently where I am in the north of England anyway. I hope that clears up any confusion and I hope this uh, little flap works tomorrow. All right, sweet. <laughs> But guys, that's going to be the end of today's video. It's nearly Christmas Eve, which means it's nearly, no, it's nearly, it means it's nearly the start of the Festive 500. I'm going to be partaking in that this year. First off, because I like riding my bike. And secondly, I've got literally nothing better to do. The Festive 500 is a challenge that is run every single year. And the challenge is to do 500 kilometers between Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve. However many days that is, I think I need to do like 100 kilometers a day. I don't really know. Either way, that's the plan this year. I'm going to try and complete that. Thanks for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, please drop a thumbs up and as always I, I will see you tomorrow at yeah, five at least you yeah. give me the brain got design on my wrist ain't no fat no you better watch your back you gotta love my see that pity when I look into the crowd no I guess I try to know romance